Hey folks, it's John with K2Tropicals.com, bringing you part three of the overhaul of this 125 gallon tank here. If you recall from part one, we talked all about the problems that I was having with this tank and the fact that I just gave up trying to figure out what those problems were from and just said, you know what, let's wipe the slate clean. Let's start completely all over again. And so in that video, we talked about that, but then we also started to break the tank down, getting it ready to do this overhaul on it. And in part two, we talked all about that guy right there, the Fluval FX4. I decided rather than breaking down the original filter, cleaning it all out, putting all new stuff in it, why not just go with something brand new? And I was excited to see that Fluval put out a brand new product and it's more than enough filtration for this tank. So decided to give that one a whirl. So now in part three, it's all about the substrate. I knew I wanted to rip out the old substrate and start with something brand new. I wanted to do something that would be good for live plants and I wanted something to just completely change the look I wanted this to be an actual overhaul of the tank or a remodel of the tank I didn't want to just put everything back together exactly the way it was I wanted to make a drastic change here and as you can see with this thing I definitely did that I went with something that you didn't think I was gonna go with I've talked in the past about how I'm not a huge fan of sand substrates I had sand in my 240 gallon tank which I also overhauled and documented on video I went with the African cichlid mix from Caribsea in that tank and I loved the look of it. I loved the buffering quality of that sand, but I wasn't crazy about what the fish did with that sand. African cichlids are interior decorators. They moved the sand all over the place. I had these huge mounds piled up in the corner. It was a huge problem. That's not the sand's fault. That's the fish's fault. So I loved the product. I just wasn't crazy about it for my particular situation. And it kind of gave me a bad taste in my mouth as far as sand goes. Again, I love the look of it, but I just didn't like the maintenance of it and how you have to do it completely differently than gravel. Gravel's just so much easier. On a side note, I've actually thought about doing a whole video about doing water changes and maintaining sand substrates. If you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. So for this tank, it all came down to economics. There's only a certain amount of money that we had to put into substrate. And as you know, substrates can be extraordinarily expensive. If I was going to use a store-bought aquarium gravel, it was going to cost well over $100 to put substrate in this to get it thick enough for what I wanted to do, which was the live plant. So I started looking around, coming up with other ideas, and I ended up at Walmart. Now, the reason why I ended up at Walmart is pretty simple. It's right next door to the Petco in King George, Virginia. So I was at Petco looking at substrates. I decided to go next door and see what they had available as far as sands go. There's a couple of different sands that they had available. One is the play sand and the other is pool filter sand. Now, the play sand at Walmart was the same price as the pool filter sand. It just looked really dirty. Not, not saying it looked like a bad product, but it looked like it had a lot of dirt in it, a lot of very, very fine stuff that was gonna take absolutely forever to get cleaned out. Plus, I thought that the pool filter sand looked a little better. It was just a better looking granule. It just looked more aquarium appropriate. I also know from experience and talking to a lot of other people that pool filter sand is easier to clean out than play sand is. In most cases, from what I've been told, play sand is the absolute cheapest you can get. Pool filter sand is just a few dollars more. But in this particular case, it was only a matter of a few cents more per bag for the pool filter sand. Pool filter sand was $6.17 for a 40 pound bag. And the play sand was like $6.12, so uh, no brainer. So I wanted my substrate in this tank to be a little bit thicker. I knew I needed to buy a lot of this sand. I decided to go with six bags of this pool filter sand. They're 40 pound bags. So we're talking about 160 pounds of this pool filter sand substrate, which actually turned out to be way more than I need, but turned out to be just a little bit over $37, might've been 38 and some change with tax, but $38 for 160 pounds of this pool filter sand for the tank, that to me is an absolute no-brainer. That was the cost of about 40 pounds of aquarium gravel that you could buy from Petco. So this was the biggest no-brainer of all time. I got six bags of it. I knew that I would have more than enough. And as you'll see when we go through the whole process of putting it in, it actually turned out to be enough 
to do two tanks. So in the end, making the decision to go with pool filter sand as far as economics goes was the biggest no-brainer of all time, and I bought enough of it to do both of these tanks, and it's about an inch and a half-ish as far as the straight across measurement would go for how much three bags filled up these tanks. Now, you can see if you look at these, it is I did kind of make little mounds to plant the plants in so some areas are thicker than others but again that just gives it that nice natural look but a nice consistent inch and a quarter inch and a half all the way across just from three bags of this pool filter sand the point is you can use this pool filter sand from walmart i'm sure it's probably the same price anywhere you go and it'll cost you just a little over 18 dollars to do the entire tank if you're using it in a 125 gallon tank that's cheaper than one bag of gravel so for me, it was all about economics. It was what was gonna be the cheapest thing that I could put in here that would still look nice. And what I'm blown away by is how little it cost me, $18 to do this tank, and how good it actually looks. So I'm really, really thrilled with the way it looks. So happy I decided to put it in that tank too. So let's take a look at the process that I went through to rip out the old substrate and put this new sand in. I'm also going to show you how I cleaned this sand. You have to clean it, folks. You can't just put this straight in your tank right out of the bag. It would be a huge disaster. Your tank would be cloudy for a month, probably. If not more, your filter would get all clogged up. It's a disaster. So you would have to clean this out really well. I'm going to show you how I did that for both of these. Again, this one is going to be like a complete gutting of the interior of the tank. Clear it out scrubbing it all out this one is more of just pulling the old substrate out putting the new one in so i'm also going to show you how i painted the backgrounds on these it's just putting paint on with a brush it's not that technical but i'm going to show you that in there because i filmed it why not i might as well go ahead and include it so let's stop messing around let's go ahead and take a look at this whole process and at the end i'll give you my final thoughts all right, so naturally with a project like this, we're gonna drain the water out, make things easier on yourself, just get the water out of there. I guess you don't have to, but it sure does make life easier. Now to remove the old substrate, I used a fish carrier here. Uh, you could use really anything. And as far as the substrate goes, I threw it in the woods. I got rid of it because who knows, the problems that I was having could have been from that substrate. So I wanted it out of there. I didn't want to have anything more to do with it. Now, if you're simply changing your substrate, I suppose you could transfer it over into another tank or something like that. That's what I did with the other substrate. And yes, there is another appearance of the now infamous Al Borland shorts. Uh, thank you, Kevin Green, for pointing that out. Now, let's get into cleaning the tank out. I didn't go with any kind of harsh cleaners or anything like that. I just went with straight tap water. It has chlorine in it. You figure, you know, that ought to be enough to kind of clean it out and also disinfect it at the same time. Went through with a scrub brush and just went after it. I mean, I, I just cleaned this thing up as good as possible. It had been running for seven years, so yeah, it had accumulated quite a bit of nasty stuff in there. Now, although in this video I'm moving pretty fast, of course, this is something that I really did take my time with. It's not just a cosmetic thing. I wanted this tank to be spotless. Whatever was in there that was causing these problems, I wanted it out. Now, I also figured with having the tank leaning on its front like that, this would be a great opportunity to paint the background, finally solve that problem. Yes, you did see a bottle of cleaner there, but that is not a cleaner that I used on the inside of the tank. I used it to clean off the back. Painting an aquarium background, folks, is the easiest thing you will ever do. It really requires no particular skill whatsoever because once you have that standing back up again and you're looking at it through the water, through the glass, you can absolutely see no imperfections or anything. So you don't need to be perfect about it. You don't need an expensive brush or even an expensive paint. I just used an enamel on this. It's a Rust-Oleum black. I bought it black straight off the shelf couldn't be easier just slather it on there really good give it plenty of time to dry I, I like to put a nice thick coat on there and you can also see if there's any kind of you know light spots or anything like that uh, streaks where you might have missed it's very easy to see because you can see the light going through it from the tank so it couldn't be easier this is really something a kindergartner could do slather it on there really thick like spreading butter on bread 
and before you know it you'll have a background that looks absolutely perfect i thought that i would also take this opportunity to paint the sides of the tank with this being a future discus tank I wanted to eliminate the possibility of the fish over there in the 240 maybe stressing them out i don't know that that's ever been a problem but hey i've got it up might as well do it why not so while the paint dries on that background, it's time to go ahead and get this sand cleaned out. I like to use five gallon buckets. Some people actually do this in the bag, but no, for me, five gallon bucket is so much easier. I like to prop it up on something so that it's sitting at a slight angle so that you can just put the hose in there, clean it out like I'm doing right there with your hand, really go through it, and then just leave the hose in there so that it continues to circulate the water through and it'll just dump out the side. You don't want to put it at an extreme angle where the sand is going to come out though. Just give it a little bit of an of a angle so that the water can come out and clear it all out. Now while that's running, it's time to go ahead and scrub down these pieces of driftwood. As you see there, there is a ton of algae built up on them. This is a great opportunity to take that scrub brush, scrub them off really good and just get them back to being brown again instead of green. Now, once again, I'm not trying to save any bacteria here. So I'm using a scrub brush and water straight out of the tap that has chlorine in it. If you're trying to just clean yours off, but you wanna save that bacteria, you're gonna to wanna to use aquarium water for that. Now, while I was cleaning that driftwood off, I just let the hose sit in there, just like you see it right there, where it's pouring over the side. And I let that run for about 15 minutes. And trust me when I tell you this, folks, you cannot do this enough. Sand has a lot of very fine particles in there, a lot of things in it that are going to cloud your water up, but not only that, they could potentially cloud up your filter. So I cannot stress enough when you're doing this and when you get it to the point where you think it is good and clear, let it go for about another 15 minutes. Just take more time than you need because in the end, your tank will clear up much, much faster and you're not going to put any of your equipment at risk. This is not something that you're going to want to rush. I don't care what kind of sand you're using, whether it's one specific for aquariums or if it's this pool filter sand, you want to spend plenty of time cleaning it out. Once I had cleared out three bags of this sand, I went ahead and dumped it back into the tank and now it's time for the fun part to fill it back up again. I like to use a little bowl or something that you can put the hose into so that it's not going direct onto the sand, blowing it all out of there. And it'll just make things a lot clearer while you're filling it up. And since I took all that time to clean off that driftwood, I went ahead and placed them back in there. And then of course you'll see in a second, the boss had to come in and give her approval as to the placement of those pieces of driftwood. But there is still a little bit of algae left on there, but nothing too far out of control. Uh, we've got a couple of plecos that we can get to take care of that, no big deal. Now this is about a week later, I decided to do the exact same thing on my other 125, the one that sits below. Took all the substrate out, painted the background. I figured this was also a great opportunity to paint the canopy. Hey, get this stuff all looking real good again. Now you see a whole bunch of water in there. With this one, I didn't do a complete overhaul. I didn't want to kill all of the bacteria and all of that. I wanted to save it. so. The tank is all still very wet on the inside. I didn't, you know, completely replace the filter and all of that. I did clean the filter out, but this was not a do-over. This was just switching out the substrate. Couldn't be easier. Once again, put something in there to help fill it up so that the sand doesn't splash all over, and then you're good to go. It's as simple as that. Drain the water, pull the substrate out, clean your sand out, put the new sand in, and you're done. And now we get to the fun part. This is why we do it here, folks. This is to be able to look at it once you're done. Now, this is about two weeks after I did this whole thing. Uh, you will see a few platies swimming around in there. They came from a friend of mine. They're in there to help with the cycling process. I did use some live bacteria in there also. That does not mean that the tank is instantly cycled. I don't care what the bottle says but I've got three bristlenose plecos in there and I've got the platies. There's seven platies and those, again, it's to help with the cycling process, monitoring it very closely, doing a fish in cycle. I don't intend to lose a single 
fish because I'm just very anal that way. I'm going to be on top of it and I'm going to do my best not to lose any fish. So far, everything has been so good. So you can see there that I also took the time to paint the trim on the bottom tank. Uh, it was a wood grain. It didn't match anything. So that made a huge difference there. Now everything is matching up and this is it. This is the finished product. This is done. All of the wires are zip tied together. Everything is neat in its place. The new Fluval FX4, the new sand substrate in both of these tanks. I love it. I couldn't be happier and we're going to have to figure out. Maybe we can work together as a group to figure out what we're going to do to decorate that bottom tank. So there you go. That is the transformation of both of these tanks from the kind of crummy gravel substrate that was in there before to this fine looking sand. I'm absolutely thrilled with this. Originally it was just going to be that tank, but I was so happy with it and I bought twice as much as I needed. So I decided to put it in that one too. And I'm glad I did. It gives it some consistency and it looks really, really good. Now you also got that little bonus in there of painting the background. Painting the backgrounds on these things is very simple, folks. I mean, just put it on thick and it'll stick and it'll be nice. And if you need to get it off in the future, a razor blade will scrape it right off. No big deal. You don't need big fancy equipment. You don't need to buy expensive paints or anything like that. Just slap it on there and it'll be good to go. So I am so happy with this transformation so far. Got a lot of work to do in this tank to figure out what we're going to decorate it with. Maybe my friend Corey and I can talk about that. But lots of stuff going to be going on with these. Again, if you you want to see a video all about maintaining sand not just doing a water change but maintaining sand in an aquarium this isn't my first rodeo with these folks I've had sand a lot in the past so I can do a video thoroughly talking about the process of maintaining this sand if you want to see that put it down in the comment section below also don't forget to visit kgtropicals.com we've got the new KG Tropicals Premium Cichlid Pellets on there for sale. They are selling like crazy. I want to thank everyone that's ordered that so far. It's been an absolute blast. It's almost like a third job. I'm getting up in the morning. I'm packing orders. I'm taking them to the post office, then going to my other job, then coming home and doing live streams. And Oh, it's absolutely manic, but I appreciate it very much, and it's been an absolute thrill. There's going to be a lot of things added to the website in the very near future. We're always processing what to add next. If you have an idea of something that you want to see available on cagetropicals.com so that while you're there picking up some food, you can pick this up and pick that up, put it down in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see in there. I'd eventually love to turn cagetropicals.com into kind of like a full-service, one-stop shop for everything that you might need. I don't know that we're ever going to carry tanks and stuff like that, except for the customaquarium.com tanks. We're not really carrying those. We're just selling them. I don't know. I don't know how far we'll go with it, but if you have an idea, let me know down in the comment section. So I'm rambling at this point. It's time to close it down. Let me know also if you want to see that sand video. Maybe that'll be next week. Otherwise, I've got plenty of other things that I can talk about. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Yeah.